You got any funny Joe Pass stories you want to share? I do. I do. I do. It's uh, Joe was Joe for me anyway. Being a young guy, Joe was a uh, um, he had a really gruff exterior, but but you know at heart he was a a, a really sweet guy. Um, so he was playing at this place called Charlie's Georgetown, which was uh, under the uh, the freeway in Georgetown, like down by the river. And Charlie's had a uh, had two rooms. They had the main room where the the special artist would play, and then they had the bar, which they had actually had a piano bar in there. So all the musicians would come, local musicians would come into the piano bar and hang out and you know play and stuff. Sometimes the club would let you go into the main room and check out whoever was playing if they if they liked you. Um, and then many times the, the players would, instead of going to their dressing room, the players from the main room would come into the bar and hang out at the bar and they'd get a chance to hear some of the local players, right? <clears throat> so I, I met Joe in this way because my girlfriend at the time, this is going back to 19, 1981, I believe. Um, yeah. Um, my girlfriend at the time actually had a, a job as hostess at the club. And, you know, so all the musicians, of course, were, like, trying to hit on her. And, and I think she would string them along and then, and then drop it on them, you know, like, yeah, my boyfriend is a, uh, is, a, is a jazz guitar player. Well, I wasn't really a jazz guitar player at that time, but, you know, he's a guitar player, you mm-hmm. know. So I got to meet quite a few of, uh, of the players, you know, kind of between those two things, you know. And I met Joe uh, somehow through this. And, you know, I, he was playing solo guitar. So I'd go in. He was playing for two weeks every night so you know i went in and uh checked him out a few nights and after a while i got up the nerve to go talk to him and joe could i get a lesson from you says yeah kid sure um i said how much is it going to cost he said well i tell you what there's a i'm staying at such and such a hotel there's a cigar shop across the street from the hotel go in there and get me a box of these cigars and he wrote down the name that, 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 that'll pay for the lesson, right? I said, okay, cool. When do you want to do it? He said, oh, you know, uh, uh, tomorrow morning, come, come by about, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, great, fine, perfect. So you got to figure. I got no money, man. I mean, I'm, I'm literally living in a, in, in a closet <laughs> at that point, I think. <laughs> and, and, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, how much can a, a box of cigar cost? You know, I'm, I'm thinking of like my uncle's white owl cigars or, you know, right. Philly blunts or something like that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so I go into the cigar shop and uh, the cigars, they're like 250 bucks. And I just walk out <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. Now keep in mind, this is, you know, in the, in the, in the 80s, the early 80s. Mm. So, so, so I go up and I'm already nervous because I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Well, I, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to oh, do. Oh, you okay, just went without the cigars? I just went without the cigars. Now, so of course I come in, I've got my guitar in the case and Joe can see very clearly, I don't have no box of cigars with me, right. man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he, I think he started looking at me. He was like, this kid's like, he's, I was skinny at that time. You know, he's, he's like, he's pretty, pretty wiry looking. So anyway, I, I come in and he, he's like, oh, go ahead, kid, you know, play something for me. So I played a couple of things I'd worked on and, you know, I played some chords that he, that he, he was like, what is that that you're playing? And it was like some re- really crazy stretch, right? He said, I can't play those kind of chords, man, because I, uh, my hands won't stretch like that. I said, wow. I didn't know that, you know, like Joe Pass, a great chord <laughs> player, man. I didn't know you couldn't play those. Right. Wow, it's amazing, right? So he spent about an hour and a half with me. He didn't, he just was kind of walking around the room doing stuff, and I'd play, and then he'd make a comment. So he, he cracked me up. He said, uh, you know, in regard to the sweeping stuff, the guy who was really doing mm-hmm. a lot of that at the time was Barney Kessel. Mm-hmm. And, and, I he, he, I said so, Joe. You got any uh, you got any tips, man, for 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 me on any of this? And he says, Yeah, don't do too much of that Barney Kessel shit. Which <laughs> <laughs> cracked me up, man. Because of course they're contemporaries, you know. Right. Um, so comes the end of the lesson, and you know uh, he showed me a few things. He said, This is some of the stuff I'm working on. You can practice that kind of stuff, you know. He said, Sounds good, kid. Just keep doing what you're doing, which was great for me to hear. Right comes time to pay 
And I put the guitar in the case, and Joe's, he's futzing around doing stuff. He knows damn well I don't have the cigars. He's, he's right. just kind of like waiting to see what am I going to do. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, 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 Mr. Pass, uh, Joe, uh, listen, I'm, I'm really sorry, but uh, I didn't know those cigars were so expensive. And I gave him a bunch of lame excuses, and I pulled the 20 out of my wallet. And I said, I, I have $20. Can I give you this? And he looked at me, and he looked at the 20. And I think he saw that I was, like, skinny and hungry and right. just kind of, like, a little stressed. And he, and he looked at me. He took the 20. He said, sure, kid. Just don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody I gave you a lesson for $20. And then he took another look at me and he said, are you hungry? And I said, man, I'm starving because I hadn't had anything to eat that day. And he, he's, he says, says, uh, says yeah, come on, let's go get some breakfast. So he treated me to breakfast with my $20 bill, you know, which was, which, <laughs> wow. you know, and then we, we kind of stayed in touch. And I would, um, when, uh, when I was, I had actually moved to Europe briefly for about a year, just trying to check it out shortly after that. And I was in Paris around the time uh, when Keter Betts was there with Joe and Ella Fitzgerald. And uh, I'd been in touch with Keter. Keter knew I was going to be in Paris. And he said, man, you know, look for when we're playing there. And we usually stay at, uh, I forget the name of the hotel. It's a hotel they had, uh, like, jazz for many years. But, but anyway, he was playing at this big concert hall with Ella and Joe. And Keter said, man, you know, just uh, give me a ring. Uh, you know, when you see that, that we're going to be in town and, uh, you know, you can come on out to the concert. So I did. And uh, Joe remembered me. And so we were all hanging out in the, Ella had her own dressing room, but uh, Joe and me and Keeter were hanging out in this one dressing room. And it was, it was really cool. And after a while, it was just me and Joe, you know, and we're listening to Ella do her set. And, you know, he's talking about how you think I'm going to play my hippest stuff for this audience. Ella was up there singing a tisket a tasket followed by old McDonald had a farm. And he was like, man, this is, this is the top kid, right? It doesn't get any better than this. And he said, look at this dressing room. And the dressing room was, you know, like a typical, you know, dressing room, funky and just kind of like right. not, not definitely not luxurious. <laughs> he says, he says, uh, says, and listen to that, a tisket a tasket, old McDonald had a farm. You think I'm going to go up and play my hippest diminished scale on this? He said, no, <laughs> man, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to play the melody. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you right. know? So, and he was, he, but he was, he was really cool. And uh, yeah. uh, with me, he was really cool. And I know people that knew him a lot better, of course, uh, like John Pisano had some great stories about, about Joe. Um, but basically, you know, he felt, Joe, I think, felt that he he was not as good as he wanted to be. And he was always right. beating himself up over that, um, was was what Pisano told me, actually. Um, but he was always super nice to me, you know, which was, uh, you know, at, at the time, you don't think about it. You just think, wow, this is really cool. I'm hanging out with Joe Pass. How nice is that? And then afterwards, you realize that it's, you know, it's it's you know it kind of meant something some in some kind of way you know like, the, yeah. like not not that i was special but actually that he was special you know he was a special kind of guy <laughs>